but it's certainly worth uh, checking that out if you haven't already. And so this is called Home Free. And the art here is by Rick Veach and Alfredo Akela. So there is no Steve Bissett and John Tolib in this issue, but uh, two excellent artists just the same. <clears throat> Going downhill. Hey, those mist up ahead. We're almost home. Some of us have homes, Boston brand. Others simply keep walking. For my part, I must leave you here on heaven's westernmost slopes. The spheres about us have suddenly changed. Since the cataclysmic meeting of dark and light, I must inspect the territories and see that everything is in its place. What of you? Where will you go? I don't know. That's the trouble with this place on a Saturday night. It's kind of dead. For my part, I must return to my wife. We have been separated far too long. And when the storm was at its worst, I feared I would not see her again. Hey, lighten up, will ya? We made it. The war's over. Your woman's waiting for you. Ramakrishna's in her heaven. And all's right with the world. Days like this, it's good to be alive. Even though he's dead, but... At least he's pretty upbeat about it. Presumably. Exactly. Beautiful page. Um, all of these uh, sort of introductory pages with the Swamp Thing title are always beautiful. Going downhill to fish sticks. If I hadn't been talking through gritted teeth, that store detective would have never suspected. What? I already told you, fish sticks. Six boxes of frozen fish sticks. Heading down my top. They were, boy, they were cold. You in here for hooking or what? No. No, I'm not. Okay, okay. No need to twist your pantyhose. I just thought that you were with that dyed hair. You look like a hooker is all. So what did they bust you for? <laughs> I don't think her hair is dyed, actually. I think it's naturally silver. Hugging vegetables. <laughs> and the look on this uh, heavy set lady's face when she hears hugging vegetables is like, okay, that's weird. Somewhere out of my field of vision, an invisible clock is ticking. After listening to it for seven hours, I'm allowed to see the public defender. It isn't worth the wait. Smoke? No, I don't. Really? Well, I'd advise you to start. You're in big trouble. Now, since it's pointless denying your relationship with this, uh, this creature... Maybe we should go for the unwilling victim approach. What? We're obviously, well, obviously, you, you were forced into a repulsive relationship with this monster. If we maintain, no, no, it wasn't. I won't say that. I was, it was me who went to him. Miss Cable, stick with that line at your bond hearing. This afternoon and you'll go down in flames, believe me. But it's the truth. Look, this is insane. What am I being charged with? Well, since you were asked, you're being charged under those laws of this state usually reserved for people who have carnal relationships with farm animals. The precise name of the offense is crimes against nature. It's truly funny because, of course, <laughs> she's, I mean, swamping is the embodiment of nature what i'm a little bit confused about here and i may have missed it or forgotten from the previous episode is that when he was discovered when she was discovered you know making out with him in the swamp by some you know uh photographer from like a um a gossip rag or something or at least that's where he sold the photos um they all believed that it was just a man in a suit so i don't know at what point that transition to them actually believing that it was some kind of creature that wasn't just a man. Crimes against nature. 
I think of his delicate ferns between my fingers, his scented moss against my cheek, and I begin to laugh. It's good to know I can still, I still can. It's a sign of normality. Yeah, the crimes against nature thing is very funny. A sign of life. Uh-oh, there's a sign of life. Well, here we are, the region of the just dead. I guess here's where we say goodbye. I have business in Nanda Parmat. And you've got your little piece of 98.6 heaven waiting for you. You know, you're a lucky stiff. And believe me, I know from stiffs, lucky or otherwise. In fact, hey, you, I got a bone to pick with you people. Bones are all that's left, pal. <laughs> now what? Hey, I don't recognize you. You oughta. You made me go back to Earth when they resuscitated me after my heart attack. Well, that did happen. So what are you doing back here if they resuscitated you? Ha, huh. they sure did. Then they insisted on me driving, driving me to the hospital to make sure that I was okay. On the freeway, the brakes failed. It's a disgrace. I mean, is this any way to run an afterlife? Listen, I'm only a voluntary worker. I don't make a policy. You ought to take this up with the guys in the fate and destiny department. So that's pretty funny. He's, <laughs> he's getting a complaint. He's a volunteer worker. Voluntary worker, I should say. I'm sure they'll give you a case of a fair hearing. Nice transitions back and forth. Ha! Miss Cable. Frankly, I don't know what to make of this. The police have informed me that they have evidence that you consorted with a genuine non-human organism. Is this... This is unbelievable. But since you've apparently refused consistently to deny it, I have no choice other than to take this sort of affair at face value. I also have to consider the fact that you work with children. What? What? What are you saying? That I can't be trusted with kids? Miss Cable, you're saying I'm some, some sort of child molester or something? Miss Cable, I don't know what you are. But I don't think it's anything I'd care to expose my own children to. Bail's 15000 Don't leave town before your preliminary hearing. That's all. That's all? $15,000 is all? I don't have $15,000. I don't know anybody who has $15,000. That may be Constantine. What? Cable. Come on up and out. Some public spirited soul decided to put up bail and turn you loose on the community again. But who? Beats me. If I had my druthers, they'd be in here with you instead of you being out there with them. Now move it. They're right through here. D Deanna. Save it. You kept things from me and you've damaged my home's reputation, maybe beyond repair. But you were good with the kids. That's why I raised bail. Now we're quits. Goodbye, Abby. Deanna walks away and the sense of outrage that's kept me going leaves with her. I've messed things up. She doesn't like me. Instead of anger, there's a stone in my stomach gradually dragging me down. So that's the end of uh, her relationship with the uh, children's home, of course. But Deanna was at least nice enough to actually bail her out, which is pretty incredible. Down to earth. From a place of smoldering opal fog, from the region of the just dead, I descend to the realm of the quick, the cool, ethereal white gives way to the green, warm and vibrant. And I am in the web of the world once more. As the comforting embrace of the roots surround me, I detect in those fibers a sense of dormancy and repose. Is it autumn already? Eagerly seizing substance from the planet's rich and generous flesh, 
I burst up from the dark, the world of dead men, growing lungs to taste and smoke to fall air. I am home. This moment is mine, mine alone. Well, so he thinks. There's a <laughs> Constantine on the far side of the panel. Always ready to ruin things. Alone. The word hits me. The empty, aching fact of it hit me as soon as I walk back into the streets. Everywhere there's a hostile, unforgiving silence. Yeah, people are whispering, talking about her, making jokes. Uh, a, a mother grabs her child and pulls her back away from her. This one's all pretty ridiculous. Stopping for groceries, I meet a couple I know. The woman pulls, opens her mouth to speak, but her husband pulls her away. Cheeks burning, I hurry home. But when I get there, the silence is waiting for me. Cold, reproachful, inviolate. <clears throat> and then it's broken by a phone. Hello? Yes, this is Abby Cable. Who? Excuse me? Do I like what? Yeah. He makes two more calls, each more pornographic than the one before. After that, I leave the phone off the hook. And I put a chain on my door and think about how good it is to be out of jail. Which is sort of ironic because, of course, there she is sitting alone uh, in bed. She put a chain on her door so she sort of feels like she's in jail once again anyway. <clears throat> I don't go out of doors much until I'm called for the, my preliminary hearing. This is also known as a probable cause hearing, and I'm confused until I find out that they're the same thing. The parish court judge has, the work, has to work out the probable cause of the crime and then decide if there's enough evidence to go to a grand jury. The crime is having a relationship with a monster. I could tell them that the probable cause of the crime was that I was in love with him, but they don't ask me. Quickly and predictably, the judge recommends my case to the grand jury, and then it's over. On the way out, I'm surrounded by the reporters. Miss Cable, is it true that your husband's on life support? You mean Matt? Yes, he, he had a car accident. Really? And would he approve of your new relationship? Miss Cable, Wanda Fry from The Courier, is the Swamp Monster, uh, anatomically complete? Is it true you're pregnant? Will you go on working with children? Is your hair natural? A barrage of questions and flashbulbs. Alec, I don't think I can take this. Alec, where are you? Ah, there you are. Constantine, I hope that you have not come with more questions and excursions. I am home and all my wars are over. Couldn't agree more, mate. I just called by to pay my respects before flying back to England. The phone, the lights, the water will be disconnected. There'll be something nasty evolving in the fridge, but who cares? It's home, innit? beavers in the foreground. Mainly I wanted to thank you. I know I've led you on a bit. You led me across America. Why? When you could have told me of the Braharia immediately. Would you have believed me if we'd tackled the Braharia and they'd still awake in the darkness? Could you have faced it back then? No. You're right. How did your battle go? Tough. Satara dead. Sarson, Sargon dead. Mento deranged. Out on Frank, Judith, Emma, Sister Anne Marie, Ben Cox, his mother. And this has turned out to be an expensive old do. A very expensive old do.
You knew the dangers that many of your comrades would not survive. I did what I had to do. Perhaps, how do you feel about that? How do you think? Listen, I'm fed up of talking about me. What did you get out of all of this? I gained much to consider. The nature of good and evil. The advice of the Parliament of Trees that seemed so useless, yet proved so necessary. But also, I must consider you, Constantine. Who are you? Me? I'm just an ordinary person with ordinary needs. Food, shelter, sleep, sex, recreation. A safe world to enjoy it all in. That's all most ordinary people want. All of us poor, uncomplicated buggers. We're harmless. It's all the extraordinary people who are dangerous. The ones who will wake up thinking, Will I conquer Europe today? Instead of what's for breakfast. That sort of needs watching. <laughs> Will I conquer Europe today? Yeah, Napoleon, Hitler, the list goes on. It's like Parliament warned. You avoid power, avoid anger. Their warning cannot be denied. But in my case, at least, it was unnecessary. The war is over. I am home at last. What could possibly anger me now? <laughs> I think we know the answer to that question is coming up very soon when he finds out Appy's predicament. And one really entertaining note here is they've made no they made no bones about the fact that uh Constantine in his initial incarnation that you see here was based almost exactly on uh, Sting lead singer of the police and now just Sting but here you have Sting's actual name when he says who are you then you see down here on this little barge or boat or whatever the Honorable Gordon Sumner they even put a question mark after Honorable which is pretty funny but Gordon Sumner is actually Sting's actual name so as a clever little thing, and making no bones about the fact that they based the character on Sting, which I guess, I don't know, I guess I get his blessing for it. <clears throat> get out and go to Russia, you are sick. Okay, that's a note on a brick that just came through her window. So, she's uh, really suffering, getting a lot of uh, hate mail. These days, that would be hate on Twitter. Dear Miss Cable, I've prayed to the Lord to forgive you, but you have to lay down with the beast, and you are an abomination in this in his sight. Uh, Elysium Lons, dear Abigail, in light of recent events, I must inform you to regret you that your services are no longer required at Elysium Lons. So she's fired. She's getting hate mail. Dear Nordic Frost Goddess. I've seen your picture in the news. Are you into S&M? <laughs> it's always people like that. Dear slut, dear is misspelled. What is the matter? You cannot get a real man. Real is misspelled. So you cannot... So a real man, so you can have intercourse with anything. It is bad. Your husband is in a comma. He would whoop your ass. You are an ugly pig. People do write letters like this. Dear Miss Cable, the grand jury has set the following dates for your arraignment. Blah, blah, blah. Dear Deanna, this is killing me, and I can't stand it. I'm leaving. There's a check enclosed, even along with the pay. I'm due from Elysium Lawns. It won't cover my bail, but I'll pay off the rest when I can. I promise. I'm sorry, Abby Cable. I pack everything. I can't bear to leave. Then it takes ages tying my headscarf so that it hides my stupid hair. I might as well have, here I am, please, arrest me, tattooed on my forehead. I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm jumping bail. I'm a fugitive. I'm on the run. I reach the Greyhound station. I realize I have absolutely no idea where I'm running to. Peter Pan buses. So maybe she's 
She has no idea, but she's going to Neverland. Where do runaways go? They go to the big city, someplace like New York or Metropolis, and they get hooked on junk or sold into prostitution. No, not me. I've handled worse monsters than the city has to offer. Finally, I choose a bus, buy a ticket, and take a seat. The old man next to me glances at me once and stares out of the window. He sits eating breath mints, one after another, packet after packet. When the bus driver starts the engine, I feel a wave of relief. I have to get out of Louisiana before all of those small town values pile up and crush me. I need someplace big. A place where people can get lost. Gotham City. So, Batman incoming eventually. <clears throat> Here we are then, the end of the road. Huma, two miles. Constantine, before you go, I should tell you that there are a few human beings who... Don't say it, mate. Don't say anything nice to me. I'd have to say something nice back and ruin my image. Besides, I've got this really ace joke I've been dying to tell you. How do you baffle a vegetable? Jokes, Constantine. After all, that we have seen very well. Once more, I shall permit you to use me as a straight man. I give up. How do you baffle a vegetable? I guess the answer is you disappear. gone. My family, my friends, my lover. So is this it then? Is this the place that my life was leading to? Does everybody sooner or later, someday or the other, end up here? Here in the dark city? I shouldn't have chosen this place. I should have gone to Metropolis, New York, someplace without so many shadows. Yeah, Metropolis is the shiny, happy place. And Gotham uh, especially in Alan Moore's version, it's very dark. This guy's got a swastika on his head, even though he's carrying the Holy Bible. This looks like the same lady she met in jail. <clears throat> and there's a big question of how she will get back in contact. She doesn't know where Alec is. She doesn't even know if he's gotten back yet. And now he's in Louisiana. He has no idea where she is. So, big problem. Gotham has a reputation. It isn't like those other places. The buildings, huge blocks of light, look stranded somewhere between 1930 and 2001. Art Deco shoulder to shoulder with faceless steel and glass. When I was a kid, I thought heaven looked like this. But then you read about Gotham's criminals, all deformed or insane, and you realize that it's just the surface. Under all that style and civilization, there's a zoo full of Dick Tracy's nightmares yammering to get out. Oh, God. What am I doing here? Pretty great commentary by Alan Moore on sort of the history of you know, Gotham and references to comic book history. And also like the Art Deco design, the 1930 to 2001, that was very specific. Um, especially in Tim Burton's film version but since I guess I have to maybe I should ask one of the natives for directions uh excuse me huh what oh geez that's great how you get it looking like that every time I use bleach it just frizzes up I look like an experiment hey Laverne look at this great god a snow white Where's all the little guys with the lanterns? Ha <laughs> ha. No, she's kidding. You look fabulous. Uh, look, I, I just wanted to ask if there's a good place to get a room around here. Well, listen, my best advice is you find a real fat, contented-looking cockroach and follow him. Ha <laughs> Well, raise my rent, Laverne. There's the police. 
Okay, ladies, stay where you are till you're asked to approach the vehicle. We got company. I start to move away, and a man shouts something I don't understand through a bullhorn. Sounds like staple your arm. My chest thuds, hollow. Suddenly I know exactly where I'll be sleeping tonight. I searched for Constantine, but he was gone. And so I came to look for Abby, slithering up the waste pipes into her apartment. But she is also gone. A calendar in the kitchen has turned to October. Surely I have been in the afterworld for days, and not months. I walk through the deserted apartment, growing more e uneasy with each step. Her clothes, her valuables, all gone. Framed upon the wall, an incubus squats upon a sleeping woman's chest and leers knowingly. She cannot simply have left. There must be a simple explanation. Any moment now, the door will open and she will walk in and be surprised to see me and throw her arms around me and press her face to my chest. Any moment now. Any minute now, you know, he's going to be in here shouting about his bitches. Yeah, I know. Well, just so long as he bails us out quicker than last time is all. Miss Cable. Cable? She said her name was Holland. How come she gets out first? Didn't Floyd show yet? Not a hair, Laverne. Don't feel bad, Miss Cable. Ain't getting out. She's helping with inquiries. Miss Cable, she said. They know. I'm taken before a man with egg on this lapel and breath that hits you from right across the desk. His name's Bullock. And he tells me that my name is Abigail Cable. I don't say anything. Louisiana Super Superior Court. Uh, Fugitive Bulletin that he's reading as he's eating this big Subway sandwich or whatever and staining it. It seems the Louisiana authorities sent out the flyer as soon as they figured I'd skip bail. Now, thanks to a routine hooker sweep, Gotham can send a flyer right back. Here she is, guys. Come and get her. Her eyes are tearing up. I guess more from... Maybe from the situation, but also from the fact that he's blowing cigar smoke in her face. <clears throat> and Swamp Thing is reforming. Leaving Abby's apartment, I return to the swamps. Perhaps she came looking for me and got eaten by an alligator, smothered in a bog, screaming for help, and I wasn't here. No. She has to be here somewhere. There has to be some trace of her. Some trace of her. <laughs> He's standing on it. Huma Daily Courier. February 18th, 1986. Monster sex queen jumps bail. Arrested in Gotham. Extradition hearing date set. So. <laughs> Typical tabloid news is what he's commenting on here. Abby. Power. Power is not the thing to be calm within oneself. That is the way of the wood. Abby. Power tempts anger. And anger is like a wildfire. Avoid it. That looks clearly like an eyeball there. So it makes this look like, yeah, a face in a sense. Abby! And all the dogs of Huma started to bark. And the children of Huma lay awake until dawn, too frightened to go to the bathroom despite the pressure in their bladders. And the tree shivered in a panic of dead leaves. And the moon drew thick gray covers over its head. And out in the swamp, the monster raged trampled and roared his lover's name and promised 
war. Next, natural consequences. <clears throat> so he thought he was back to peace, and sure enough, there's always something on the horizon. So you have, uh, this is issue 52, Swamp Thing and Arkham Asylum. And guess what? There's the Joker. And there's Two-Face at the bottom here that is being covered by the um, navigation. And there is the Pharaonic Man, Jason Woodrow. Not sure who that is. Kind of hard to tell. And this is by Alan Moore, Rick Veach, and Alfredo Akela, same uh, creative team as before. October. Fog slakes the fever of the bayous, drifting like cold music between the tree leaves, the trees. Leaves are hanging like dead notes in the wind's invisible stave. The swamp god is coming, bodiless, through the night. His intelligence roars through the lays and rude lines, sunk deeper than the deep cables and forgotten pipes. The swamp god is coming, out from Louisiana like an underground hurricane. His power moves, crackling the earth, that erupts with unseasonal life. At its touch, leaving a razor slash of furious green across the gray fields behind him. Scarring the autumn with summer, the swamp god approaches the far cities. One thing leads to another. Well, some of these are natural consequences, or unnatural, I guess, in a sense. But uh, that's a pretty cool... Um, way of describing his enraged travel from the swamp towards Gotham. Surging through the remote strata where men's lives are reduced to half-inch seams, he feels the presence of the city ahead of him. A numb, deadened area in the green, a fugue in cement. He penetrates the suburbs, blazing beneath Evanston, Indiana, like a buried comet, and the fugue builds ominously surrounding him. The suburbs, with their crew-cut lawns and nervous shrubbery, are the first sour whispers of the woodwind. Across the vacant lots of Gotham Village, he burns like a fast fuse, a bitter tangle of buried wires all about him, the rubber roots of buildings, the strings come and whining, the fugue builds. He reaches Little Stockton and the Techno Belt and the lobby of Allied Metallurgical, the ore mongers, <laughs> keep a pet wilderness, caged and emasculated amongst the furnaces. The brass enters, too bright and molten, too loud, the uptown and percussion. Gotham Park entrance, the fugue builds, massive, deafening, escalating. So, first of all, pretty amazing, like his, his travel has become a lot more uh, not necessarily destructive because it's actually creating, you know, plant life all the way along, even though, like, here's trees growing out of buildings. But, and then this is a little bit suggestive here since it looks rather phallic penetrating these trees. But uh, he's having to go up this high now because there are no trees, everything's concrete. And finally, he just explodes forward. And what looks like a graveyard, yeah. Captain John Lagerquest founded Gotham City in 1635. Okay, not a graveyard, but like, uh, or maybe, yeah, actually, maybe it is. 
and they've people have already like uh, written herpes and fu on uh, graffiti on this uh, this memorial sort of um, thing. Uh, let's see, Alan Moore, Rick Veach, and Alfredo Akella. So same thing created by Ween and Lights at Wrightson. Really good stuff. And Toxic Poison, Sunderland Corporation. <clears throat> the park glimmers with a vague, dark shapes poised undecided on the precipice of dawn and definition. The air stings his eyes and he grows a tougher membrane to compensate his red stare drinking in the city. To the south, he feels the business district stirring with the half-asleep purr of the limousines, the rustle of money waking up. There, there is the city's heart pumping, green blood to the gray giant, the Gotham Stock Exchange. West is Glendale, once a separate town now swallowed whole by the Leviathan. It hides its resentment poorly behind its outmoded curtains, lying in the stomach of the beast like a stone. To the east is Bryant Town, where the slums lean against each other for support, old and consumptive and children grow like sick dandelions amongst the rubble. This is where the city breeds its rats. Sharon lies north, a hospital, two cemeteries, a melancholy place where the Gotham, where Gotham comes to die. But beyond that is a Somerset. He feels an unexpected fluttering in the world's autumn web, another mind in the green. Intrigued, he dives out of his flesh and into the grass once more, the rekindled fuse burning away towards the north, towards Somerset, towards Arkham Asylum. One thing leads to another. <clears throat> Just one lead? That's all I've been waiting for these past two years. Now I've got it. When can I see her? Not until after our extradition hearing. First thing this morning. Frankly, I still don't see why a morals case, however bizarre, merits government involvement. You are from the government, mister. Wicker. Dwight Wicker. I'm with the DDI. And yes, we do have a certain government affiliation. As for the seriousness of the offense, we believe the being this woman cohabits with is guilty of first-degree murder. You recall the Sunderland case? In Washington, some big industrialist got found dead, found sm smothered in the lobby of his own building. Sunderland had been studying the monster, believing it to be dead. It wasn't. But General Sutherland very surely was. There was moss in his mouth. There was green pulp beneath his fingernails. Commissioner, I want that creature. And Commissioner Gordon. Bullock, of course. Another big slob of a detective. <clears throat> and you think this cable woman can lead you to her? Is that your only interest in her? Excuse me, Commissioner. I've been handling the cable case. Did a little research. This woman's husband, he worked for the DDI some years back. Got messed up as a result. Also, there are rumors of DDI involvement in a big military operation down in Virginia, during which the Cable's house got bombed. You didn't tell us all this, Mr. Wicker. Commissioner, this is a matter of national security. The details needn't concern you, or this, this. Detective Harvey Bullock, pleased to brr, meet you. I didn't come here to explain the facts of life to the two provincial cops. There's a homicidal monster out there, somewhere a menace to society, maybe to your city. Help my agency protect you. Gotham has its own ways of dealing with menaces and monsters, Mr. Wicker. 
Ask the Joker. Ask Harvey Dent. If you like, I can give you your, their address. It's a pretty simple address. Arkham Asylum for the Criminally Insane. Arkham. Land lighting rolls toward Bedlam through Somerset's woodlands. And then the swamp god is inside, in the lawns, in the waste pipes, humming through the moss upon the madhouse walls, climbing an explosion of ivy to the eaves and high gutterings. He searches for disturbance in the green. The clamor of the wounded vines is overwhelming. This is where Gotham sends its bad dreams. Somewhere a sticky-faced man slaps the cold cheek of a mannequin, then cries, begging its forgiveness, clinging to the fish tank in a slither of algae. The swamp god notes this and moves on. Elsewhere, a disfigured killer irritably flips a disfigured coin, roaring threats at his lawyer before crossing the cell to answer himself in calm, reasonable tones his handsome profile lined with understanding. The swamp god shudders and moves on, avoiding the room where the pale thing giggles to itself. He approaches the core of the disturbance. Locating it, he flicks, flexes a remorseless green fingers beneath the chill stone floor, splintering it as if this were, were thin ice, as if it were nothing. Yee! It's funny you move past the Joker so quickly. Alan Moore did. Yeah. And eventually would write The Killing Joke, which he described as a glorified Batman annual, which I don't think he liked very much ultimately. Or at least not in retrospect. It's, it's you, the Swamp Thing. You've come. Come to punish me? No, Woodrow. I merely noticed your aura and investigated. It is not you that I seek. It is not you that I've come to punish. But all the things that I did, I hurt the green, tried to use it in anger against the humans. I was so wrong. So unforgivably wrong. Woodrow. The wrath of nature is not wrong, nor is it unjust. That man should bear its brunt. For anger, at least, I forgive you. The green forgives you. But you are the last that shall be forgiven this day, and a city awaits my judgment. Wait! Don't go! You don't know what this place is like. Please, don't leave me here. Don't leave me here with the voices. Well, he bestowed his forgiveness on the Floronic Man, who actually did kill people. But Miss Cable, one moment, please. Hey, pervert, you know what they're going to kind of do to you in a pen? Just look this way, Miss Cable. And the scene here is today is extraordinary. Miss Abigail Cable, defendant in Louisiana's so-called Beauty and the Beast morals case, is just arriving here for extradition hearing. Hey, Swamp Lady, all right. Okay, people, let's just keep her moving. Miss Cable. Miss Cable, we're from the Gotham Woman's Action Group. We just want to say good luck, sister. We know what it's like. Thank you. Come on, move it. The court's waiting. Geez, what a mob. Give me a nice, uncomplicated child murderer to deliver any time. You ever get tired of snuggling up to shrubbery, sweet thing? Here's my number. Abby, 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 where are you? Hey, she looks weird. Is she going to faint? Come on, give her back. Give, get back. Give her some air. Abby, Alec? And maybe all he needs to find her. Alec, is that you? 
Amongst the city's foundations, the swamp god hears her speak his name and feels a jolt of simple love so powerful that had he burst, had such a thing as, had he such a thing, his heart would burst. Uh, slightly tricky turn of phrase. Alec, the touch of her mind, the aching nearness of her, unlocks a flood of memory, almost too sharp to bear. Her laugh like deep water, the curve of her breast, the brush stroke of her collarbone. Abby, Abby. He cannot live without her, not for a moment longer. His power surges. The fuse burns bright and eager towards its explosion. Across the city's gray map, an invisible hand rules a line in bright green crayon, and he whispers her name, and he whispers, I'm coming. Cool panels there. Tremendous kind of bird's eye view shot of uh, Gotham. And then, of course, just almost literally his head just exploding forward. It's okay. I don't think she's, uh, I think she's snapping out of it. Her pupils uh, look kind of dilated. Could be a drug reaction. Your Honor, I submit that my client is clearly unfit to testify at this hearing. Mr. Barnard, I can, play, I can appreciate your client's wish to delay extradition, but from the reaction outside, I think it's clear that Gotham wants this woman off its hands as soon as possible. Hearing will proceed. Firstly, we must establish her identity. When arrested, you gave the name Abigail Holland to the arresting officers. You have since been identified as Miss Abigail Cable. Is Cable your true name? Miss Cable? Miss Cable, I asked you a question. Oh, uh, oh, he's so angry. Never felt him like this, so fierce and strong. He's coming this way. He's, Alec, Alec, oh, Alec, can you hear me? Am I, uh, no, I'm not hurt, not physically. Alec, it's been so awful, they, what, I didn't catch that. Has this defendant had the standard psychiatric evaluation? She was passed, a AI, Your Honor. You want me to, oh, oh, I see. <laughs> oh, Alec, that would be so funny. Well, he's just going to put a rose on his, uh, by his gavel. Miss Cable, there is no room in this courthouse for willfully eccentric behavior. There, it's done. Is that okay? Oh, God, I love you. Hurry, please hurry. Miss Cable, you're treading dangerously close to contempt of court. Contempt, yes. Yes, I think that's the word. Contempt. See, you brought all this on yourself. You understand? I mean, you just couldn't leave it be. You couldn't leave us alone. And now it's too late. Now you're in trouble. What in the hell? The floor is shaking. Earthquake. Oh, geez, it's an earthquake. It's a... Explosion. Fantastic panel there. Uh, his face, and then he's just like explosion of roses, thorny roses. But uh, as angry as he is, this is a tremendous like expression of his love for her as well. Ah, uh, and he's covered in roses, so it's kind of like, despite his anger, kind of romantic at the same time. And they're all terrified, yeah, except for Abby. My love. Abby, what have these creatures done to you? Jeez, it's talking. Warning me. Hold it there, pal. Take one more step and I'm warning you. Warning me. You are warning me. Do you warn the hurricane? 
you warn the earthquake. You have taken that which I love away from me. I have come to reclaim it. Mister, I don't know what the hell you are, but that woman is in the custody of the city. She ain't going anywhere except back to face trial in Louisiana. Now back off or we open fire. Always guns. Are they your only solution? You can shoot the animals in the forest. You cannot shoot the forest. I think we can maybe chip the bark a little. Man, if it moves, shoot. No. Alec, don't make them shoot. Not here. Somebody will get hurt. I don't want that to happen. Not because of me. Leave it, Alec. Leave it for now. I cannot leave you here amongst these people. Alec, I'll be all right. We'll both be together soon. I know we will. Very well. But hear this, men of the city. I have tolerated your species long enough. Your cruelty, your greed, and your insufferable arrogance. You blight the soil, poison the rivers, and raise the vegetation till you cannot even feed your own kind. And then you boast of man's triumph over nature. Fools, if nature were to shrug or raise an eyebrow, then you should all be gone. I want my wife. You have one hour. A little bit unbelievable that he would leave them in her care. I mean, leave her in their care so willingly and so easily. But uh, I'm sure he's confident enough in his power that he's willing to do that, I suppose. And he's pretty angry. I think he's particularly angry, not only because of what's happening to Abby, but in traveling from Louisiana all the way to Gotham, he saw how much devastation has occurred in nature and, you know, so that's the, the diatribe about you blight the soil, you poison the rivers, you raise the vegetation, which is all true, of course. And then he just blazes off through any kind of vegetation he can find. <laughs> and literally, you know, plant life all the way down the steps, which is pretty cool. And flowers and fruits or tomatoes or something. Guys, I think we got a story to call in. Hmm, not bad. This looks bad, Wicker. Very bad. I disagree, sir. Admittedly, I didn't expect to locate the Swamp Master so soon. But that just means that we can be rid of him all the quicker. The benefits are obvious. Of course. After all, the leaks and the bungling leading up to Sunderland's death? As head of the DDI, I'd be delighted to see the last witnesses finally silenced. My only question is how. From the various reports we've had, plus this latest manifestation, the swamp creature seems to have grown much more powerful. Can he be killed? I've approached an expert on the subject. Perhaps I should introduce him. Although my expert contact is charging $1 million for a 10-minute consultancy, I think you'll agree he's worth it. We need to destroy an indestructible being. My contact is a specialist in that area. Gentlemen. Mr. Lex Luther, our 10 minutes starts now. I mean, he's an expert in a trying to destroy an indestructible being, but I don't know how many times he succeeded. Their time is up. An hour has passed, and he understands that they do not intend to surrender her without further confrontation. They must be taught. The conflict must be escalated. One thing leads to another. The city is all about him. 
a defiant surge of stone and steel and glass that forces back the surrounding wilderness, jealously establishing its rigid gray territory. The swamp god, swamp god flexes his mind. Antique boutique. The wilderness shrugs. All over town, from sudden cracks and fissures, the sky sidewalks begin to bleed emerald. Moss dribbles up from the sheer sides of the glass towers, and the ghettos are burning with orchids. Stalled cars, ugly, with buckled wings, broken antennae, begin become monuments of fabulous and surreal beauty in seconds. Spewing from choked drains and gratings, Eden comes to the city and the rectangular world becomes submerged in soft green. So too do the inhabitants, do the responses of its inhabitants. The children are first to embrace the jungle, shrieking in the low branches with juice on their chins. After them come the derelicts, the criminals, the lovers. By dusk, deep in October cold, the first few converts move, remove their clothes and go naked among the hanging gardens of Gotham. <laughs> it's like Adam and Eve. But that's a beautiful vision. He's turned this gray, cold, harsh, polluted, disgusting city, and suddenly, you know, even though this is meant to be retribution in a sense, he's beautified it incredibly, and... The people who like it the most, of course, are the children, but other people are immediately embracing it. <laughs> Getting back to nature. Lost in the primal landscape, the people of the city respond primordial, primordially. Primordially. I know the word primordial, but um, with teeth and nails and loins rustling through the foliage around them, the swamp god shivers with satisfaction. Why? Why had he bothered to restrain this glorious power for so long? Why hold back paradise? Distantly, he recalls a warning, a warning about the power, and he knows he must be cautious. The creatures in this place have their own resources, and he must not underestimate them. For this is not his jungle. This is not his home turf. I don't know how they're going to solve all of this uh, unless it has to be Swamp Thing just receding and back to the swamp and taking all of it with him, I suppose. But here you go when he says this is not his home turf. There are the fringes of the Bat Cape. And of course, sort of eagle-like gargoyle. One thing leads to another. Next the Garden of Earthly Delights. Batman is not happy. Great drawing of Batman, by the way. Like his expression. And the next issue is just by Alan Moore and John Totleben. So you have a sort of lean, wiry Batman right there. And sort of the Swamp Thing monster taking over the entire city. So let's read this one. It's a giant size spectacular. Hmm. Now I wonder whether I should read this one. <laughs> I wasn't ready for a giant size spectacular. And all major highways leading in and out of Gotham are moss bound making effective transportation impossible. As the greening of Gotham continues, almost every aspect of the city life is being radically disrupted. Despite the advice of Mayor Scowcroft, earlier this evening, many citizens seem reluctant to stay indoors until the crisis is over, and police are already reporting a high incidence of assault and looting and public indecency. Really, assault and looting. In his speech, Mayor Scowcroft 
quoted President Reagan upon the trees being a major source of pollution. <laughs> Ridiculous. He also stressed the dangers of a citywide forest fire, urging every citizen to use extreme caution. However, in closing, the mayor asked the people to refrain from hysteria, uh, saying that the disaster was exaggerated and had gained a stranglehold on the media. He reassured Gotham that everything was under control. So, <laughs> these crazy contradictory messages, warning of all these crazy things, but then at the same time, everything's under control, stay calm. And by the way, the name Scowcroft is probably very intentional reference to Brent Scowcroft, who uh, I think was... Uh, I think he was in the defense department during the reagan administration or yeah and alan moore's nothing if not very political and very uh much a critic of the united states policies and that there was a quote forces working day and night to turn this insane hothouse back into city again into a city again Forces working day and night, so uh, I have no idea what those forces would be, but as usual, they're turning it back into a city. It means they're being out with chainsaws and who knows what else, trying to cut everything down. I don't think they'll succeed in this case until uh, Swamp Thing wants them to succeed, of course. Meanwhile, the incredible being causing the eruption of Gotham's plant life, allegedly an intelligent humanoid vegetable, shows no sign of relenting his war upon our city. The creature, sighted occasionally throughout America over the years, has never demonstrated such power before, nor shown such indiscriminate hostility towards mankind. The reason behind his assault, however, is obvious. Miss Abigail Cable, a child minder charged with sexual offenses in Louisiana and also the monster's human lover, is currently being held here pending extradition. From the creature's viewpoint, Gotham has taken his woman. And if she has not returned to him, he has threatened to reduce Gotham to a primordial wilderness. Meeting these demands would mean eroding their authority of law and justice in Gotham. Refusing them court's extinction. Interesting image of Batman. It looks like he's sniffing a rose. I'd be surprised if they didn't find a way to integrate poison ivy into this, but perhaps not. Uh, and beautiful, beautiful image there. This is all just Don, John Totleben who usually is inking Steve Bissett, as you can see when he has time to pencil and ink his own work. It's also incredibly beautiful. I believe he worked on uh, Miracle Man as a penciler with uh, Alan Moore. And with the city caught on the horns of this dilemma, there seems to be no evidence in Gotham tonight of any ray of hope or sign of optimism. Attack of the Fungoid reads that sign. Adding to the problem of group, a group of youths from the Manchester district wearing gang colors and very little else made an excursion into a neighboring Coventry where they released a number of caged animals from Gotham Zoo. Okay, well, Manchester is in England and Coventry is in England and Manchester wearing gang colors is probably a reference to Manchester United's sort of thuggish hooligan fans who probably more has no love for as well. There's a rhinoceros on the loose. Later, we interviewed alleged participants. Hey, Coventry, listen up. You're in trouble, man. We set the swamp juju out on your American Nazi party ass. Ha, 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 ha. Forget your vigilante packs. It's a jungle out there, man. Meanwhile, alligators have been sighted as far downriver as the waterfront area. This is unbelievable. 200 years of civilization reduced to a jungle in as many minutes? Gotham's always been a jungle, Commissioner. No, it hasn't. It's teetered on the brink, but we've always managed to hold it there. Till now. I'm scared the whole place might blow. This business is reawakening all of Gotham's buried urges. All its old, dark instincts. Which, of course, means Batman. And there is his helm and hand. And here he comes. 
The Garden of Earthly Delights. Alan Moore, John Tetleben, and as you can see, color by Tatiana Wood, and letter by John Costanza. Bullock, Commissioner, I saw the signal. What's happening? Nothing good, big guy. The city's gone crazy with jungle fever. <laughs> Some areas they're barricaded indoors with guns. Other places they're having street parties. I can't believe it's just one creature doing all of this. I met him once. He was nowhere near as powerful then. If I uh, can find him, perhaps he'll talk. But even if you get him to remove the undergrowth, I mean, what if uh, this has gone too far? You see, he's given a taste. He's given Gotham a taste of some sort of a savage Eden. What if the city likes it? Some people are out there acting as if it's a natural born paradise. But all I can see is a, a green hell. Hmm. Guess you can choose for yourself. Doesn't look like a green hell to me, even though, you know, the power lines are certainly unattractive. I stand in an orchard, orchid, orchard, orchard, sorry, of uh, street signs and parking meters. From across the wilderness city, the wind blows fragments of music, percussive, robotic, distant. My consciousness seeps out through the filaments and shoots. In Coventry, the residence protection group creep through an overgrown department store bristling with guns and tension. In the cosmetics department, an escaped tiger treads carefully through the spilled lipsticks. Abby, I want you back. I want you back and I do not care about civilization. The wilderness can have it all. In Manchester, boys in painted leather spin on their heads and move like flickering damaged newsreels among the orchids. How quickly tribal values reemerge as society sinks down into the flowers. Abby, I've made of this city a fabulous bouquet for you, all for you. And those who took you from me have not begun to taste the fruits of my retribution. Never seen a Swamp Thing this angry before. It's kind of hard to tell. Is the city becoming a paradise or is it becoming a savage land? It's a little bit of both, I suppose. And here are the tubulars. They're like sweet potatoes yet again. Hey, look, sweet potato. My wife, man, uh, she's a West Indian. She loves sweet potato. They can get some of these into the trunk. We can't. It's full of strawberries and peaches and tomatoes. Besides, we're supposed to be working. How? We can't uh, move our vehicle. You ought to uh, learn to relax and accept the inevitable, Stan. Um, I don't know. Is this sweet potato or not? Big Meyer, you jerk. This is serious. Serious? Uh, well, I don't know. It's, uh, it's uh, Big Meyer. Society's collapsing. That escaped python in the supermarket that they killed by shutting it in the freezer. I'd say that was pretty serious, wouldn't you? Big Meyer? Uh-oh. Stan. Stan, you look really uh, pretty tonight. The hallucinogens of the... <laughs> so things are getting really crazy. As these, I forgot about the hallucinogens that um, are created by these, um, these tubulars. I think is what they are calling them. They are sweet potatoes to a sense. Immediately to a hospital, we repeat, stay away from the sweet potatoes. They contain an unidentified hallucinogen capable of causing terrifying visions. Well, they're actually not really terrifying. They're actually quite beautiful. If you or anyone else you know have eaten them, you should go immediately to the hospital. Oh, great. Not only do we have a jungle out there, it's a jungle full of potato heads. Your boyfriend got any more cute tricks up his sleeve, Miss Cable? Any more little surprise bunches of flowers he's liable to pull out? Come on. I know you're not asleep. Your eyelids are moving. Ah, well, I guess sometimes, Orp. I guess sometimes folks just ain't in the mood for refined conversation. 
Alec, oh, I want to be with you. Can we live normally together after this? I love you. Soon, Abby, soon. We'll find a way, I promise. I love you. I let her mind go slipping away into the deep and silent green. I've learned many things from the Parliament of Trees, and my power is great. They cannot keep me from her. They cannot stop me. See, our problem, Mr. Luther. Since we last encountered him, the creatures obviously discovered new abilities. He controls vegetation. He can travel anywhere instantly. Outside Chicago recently, he apparently caused an earthquake. Plus, he's totally invulnerable. I open the throats of the suburban lawns, filling the drained pools with poppies. A spluttering resident empties his shotgun into the flower drifts, feeling stupid, and the subsequent rain of shredded petals. Mr. Wicker, believe me, you don't know from invulnerable. I know invulnerable. In a lattice of green sparks, a shimmer through a topsoil of the park, where lean cats stalk fruit-fattened birds and drunkards fall in love amongst the nectarines. According to Woodrow's paper, this creature's mind is attuned to the world's vegetation. If threatened, it shifts its consciousness to a bolt hole in the undergrowth. Unimpeded, I dance along the cracks in the sidewalks, moving from window box to window box as if they were subway stations. Uptown, I erupt from a grating in the firework display of chartreuse. Beautiful, invincible. To change the creature's frequency, my people suggest an ordinary communication scrambler, modified like so. Then you'll need one of these to fire it from and these sensors to make sure you've nailed him. So much for invulnerability. I have broken the city softly, touching a forgotten nerve and its people. With the gifts of fruit and soft grass, no pain, no more death or injury than would have occurred naturally. No violence. And this will kill it, just like that? But you haven't even taken 10 minutes. 9 minutes and 15 seconds. I wanted to leave you enough time to sign and mail my check. Good evening, gentlemen. And good hunting. I searched the corners of Gotham's heart for the purchase, running invisible fingers over the harp of his, its inhabitants' minds. Some shiver and turn the TV up louder. But some, there is a resonance, a great yearning response to get back to nature, to get away from the, the idiot box that is the TV, apparently. And note that Lex Luthor, being the super genius, mad mastermind that he is, solved this problem of uh, how to destroy Swamp Thing in under 10 minutes. That's pretty impressive. And this guy, if you've been following it, you would remember him as the sort of lovable, hippie, casual drug dealer who um, gave someone else one of the tubulars that he had found in the forest as a hallucinogen to help his wife, who was in pain from cancer, to pass her. She had terminal cancer to pass her final days. And they had a beautiful experience as a result of that. So this guy probably likes what Swamp Thing has done. Oh, man. When they said the highways leading into Gotham were mossbound, they weren't kidding. It doesn't matter. I have to get into the city. You too, huh? I pitched up here uh, when I saw the news. Did you hear about the sweet potatoes? No, only what the creature said about the mankind poisoning the planet. I have to get in. I have to see him. Heavy environmental trip, huh? Well, I can relate to that. Name's Chester. 
Chester Williams, please meet you, mister. Monroe. Wallace Monroe. Listen, can we get through here? I think Monroe is from the uh, nuclear plant that where there was a disaster that created nuke face. Well, it's going to be uh, some walk, but yeah, I guess so. Look at all these cars, man. It's like something by Dolly. Uh, this is a toll booth. Shouldn't we leave some money or something? <laughs> he uh, just tilts his glasses down like, what, are you crazy? Why would you leave money in a toll booth here? Uh, Wallace, I think you should uh, maybe try to see this as a total concept and dig all the implications. I mean, I don't want to weird you out or anything, but things are different now. City has changed into a thing of subtle marvels. Across the street, children pick pure white lilies from the awnings of a sex cinema and play at weddings, parading solemnly between the silent trees. Wine dribbles from the phone booth crammed with grapes, and the mouths of subways breathe a rare, delicate perfume. Somewhere nearby, an animal growls deep in its rough metal throat. The sounds grow louder and more piercing, rising into the scream of some monstrous nocturnal predator. It's behind me. I start to turn. Dead end, dead end. Alan Moore has done this incredible, like he's, he does this every time where he creates this kind of amazing uh, sort of new creation from what was old and in the DC universe and in this case it's Gotham City he's you know turned it into this amazing jungle and it just allows him to kind of poetically to wax poetically like wine dribbles from a foam booth crammed with grapes and this uh, incredible imagery and I don't know if anyone does it better But here is a problem. The Batmobile sawing its way through the undergrowth and actually killing some vegetation. Can we talk? Perhaps. Do you intend to release my wife? Until she's been through the judicial process, I'm afraid that's not possible. Gotham can't surrender to terrorism. When we meet before, you seemed intelligent and reasonable. When we met before. I'm asking you to give me my city back. I'm afraid that's not possible. And that's your last word? That is my last word. I see then we may as well get this over with. Oh boy, hope that's not a flamethrower. Really cool drawing of Batman though, I gotta say. All of this, both of this, uh, both of these pages are pretty amazing. And there it goes. Actually, it might be some sort of chemical weed killer. And it shriveled him up. Shows it. Shriek. But then he reemerges. And Batman hits him again. And each time he does, he reemerges again. Thrack. Splux. Ploot. And <laughs> creates multiple versions of himself, which is something that he hasn't done before and no one imagined he could do, but it makes perfect sense. Uh-oh. Well, have you seen enough? Do you at last 
Ah, understand what it is that you are fighting. Let your masters know that their weapons are useless, their tricks futile. No more games, no more tricks. My wife unharmed now, or it gets much worse. Let them know. So, a gang of Swamp Things just beat the crap out of Batman. The question is, will Lex Luthor inadvertently be the salvation of Gotham and the undoing of Swamp Thing? Even though Batman is supposed to be a genius as well, and he failed miserably. Not a word. He went out after that thing an hour ago, and since then, not a word. Mr. Mayor, I know him. I'm sure if there's been a confrontation, we'll hear soon enough. One way or another, soon enough isn't good enough. My city's being eaten, and I want. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Commissioner, uh, excuse me for interrupting, but, uh, but I think we got company. Oh, God, shoot it. Gordon, somebody shoot it. Well, we're seeing a whole, a lot of manifestations of new powers from Swamp Thing. Hear this, men of the city. Gotham and Gotham's champion have fallen to the green. Oh, God. I thought if I had the plants moved out, we'd be safe. Nowhere is safe. No one is safe until she is with safe with me. Remove my wife from your prisons or remove Gotham City from your maps. You have until dawn. He's gone. Well, that Swamp Thing has become a monster. Even though he's on the, the right side of things. And some people are celebrating him. Gone from the maps unless Ab Abigail Cable is released by dawn. In a related item, the Swamp Creature has reportedly encountered the Batman leaving Gotham's famous mask vigilante severely bruised but otherwise uninjured. A worrying situation, perhaps the most disturbing aspect, has been the response of Gotham's citizens themselves. According to a random sampling of public opinion gathered, 30% of Gotham's citizens feel sympathetic towards the swamp creature and his cause. 15% also stated that they preferred an overgrown Gotham. In short, there seems to be an alarming trend towards the acceptance of this creature as a kind of cult deity. Already, pilgrims have outs from outside the city have been reported heading into Gotham. Pictures to follow. There's the hippie guy. And a beautiful, innocent young girl. Sort of looks like a young version of Abby. And this is the first thing to soften Swamp Thing's heart in quite a while. At least in the last few episodes or few issues. And on GBS Tonight, we examine the emergence of an overnight cult. Almost religious in its dedication. Well, <laughs> he's suggesting... Religion, cults and religion are the same things, essentially. Who are the Swampies? What do they want? What shadowy compulsions motivate them? <laughs> they are the least shadowy, hostile people that we've seen so far. But, of course, the, this is all about the media and how they spin things in this case. Uh, you know, they don't want anything other than the green come back. To be restored. My class studied the rainforest and how they process our oxygen. How they'll be gone in within 40 years, Sarah Finney teacher. He don't uh, tell any lies, man, and he, he nices up the area. He's got uh, the administration sweating blood. He's like real extreme. He doesn't suck. Hey, are we getting paid for this? Denzel Peachy and Lori Dickens. 
he's funny he wears flowers and uh when he talks like he says it, it's all rumbly well that's good to know uh that i'm on the right course <laughs> am i on tv kristen hoberman six years old these people and others like them are gathered within the mon with the monster in central central gotham having declared their allegiance they are presumably waiting for dawn and the promised showdown nobody knows the outcome but one thing's certain the battle lines have already been drawn up yeah it's not like batman's going to give up he's uh plotting a new way to maybe stop this hey this is this a trip or what it's like a predestination. See, I found one of the Swamp Guy's tubers months back, back in Louisiana. It made me do a lot of thinking, you know. It's really valuable to me, man. Maybe uh, meeting him can, like, uh, answer some questions about myself. I mean, how does a guy know whether he's good or evil? You ever wonder about that stuff? I don't have to. I know what I am. He knows they did something very evil. I used to work for a company that dumped radioactive waste, covered for them, even to my wife. She got exposed to the radiation radiation while she was pregnant. I ran out on her, couldn't take the guilt. Since then, I heard that the baby was stillborn, and that my wife, well, she doesn't have long to live. I want to go to her, but I can't. I can't help her. I can't offer her anything. I want you to have this for you. I want you to have this, man, for your wife. Maybe uh, it'll help you work something out. Maybe it'll help us both work something out. Here's the first chink of light. You're right. Don's breaking. If he's going to carry this threat out, it'll be soon. The National Guard backing us, I think we have enough firepower to hold him. I'm not sure. I faced him last night. I wouldn't like to guess what the limits of his powers are now. Perhaps Gotham should release the woman. Surrender? You're kidding. I never thought you would suggest that. I wouldn't. Not if I was sure of the laws I was defending. What crime did she commit, Commissioner? Who exactly did she hurt or abuse? It's not that simple. It's a uh, ouch, ouch, smat. Uh oh, it's a swarm. Hmm, there's a lot of bugs around for this time of year. Holy God, Commissioner, look out! Looks like a swarm of bees and perhaps locusts, roaches, crickets, everything imaginable. So we might have like a biblical plague on our hands soon. Insects. I thought the scent of the flowers seemed heavier this morning. He's using their perfume to bring down a plague of bugs on Gotham. We can, uh, we can handle bugs. And if he's using insects, uh, maybe he's exhausted his tricks with plants. Maybe the end is closer and we... You feel that? The ground shook. Batman has... That's just meant to be funny. He just has bug spray. Bat spray for the bugs. He's probably the only one not getting stung or bitten. Subway train, listen, you're right. He's fighting at a disadvantage here. I mean, Gotham's a city. There's only a limited range of vegetation for him to use. What about the botanical gardens? Subway train. But the lines are all blocked by roots. Botanical gardens. Of course, they have almost every known species of plant there. Poisonous ones like the hogweed, the hogweed, flesh eaters like the sundew. They have cacti, belladonna. That isn't a train. Banyan's poison ivy. Yeah, hey, you're right. That's not a train. What is it? It feels like it's getting stronger. Can you hear that noise? Like thunder beneath the ground. Redwoods. Oh, jeez. Whoa. Look at that amazing, amazing full page.
So this uh, this um, issue is just like all out Alan Moore just gone crazy expanding Swamp Thing's powers, but all believable. You know, he he's a creature of nature, and nature is essentially omnipotent, omniscient. You thought that it could not get worse. You imagined that things had reached their limits. Do not delude yourselves. There are no limits. Wherever vegetation dwells, there I dwell also. There are plants in your reservoirs. There is flora in the human intestinal tract. Which means he could basically grow in someone's stomach like alien and just like, blow them apart. Blow them into shreds. Do not tempt me. For the last time, I want my wife. No more delays. No more talk. Get back. He's abandoned the body. There's nothing holding it up. Ah, out of my way, Jim. I want to talk to the mayor now. So he just stomped through. He told him what he was. This is his last demand, you know. And then he just abandoned the body and it collapsed, presumably without killing or hurting anyone. Pretty amazing uh, art by John Tolaben. Really cool sort of psychedelic giant redwood swamp thing there. With the insect plague growing more intense and with increasing numbers of citizens succumbing to hallucinogenic tubers, the situation in Gotham is deteriorating rapidly. Out of the outskirts of Gotham Park, nearby residents report that an abnormally large sundew flytrap has eaten two domestic cats. <laughs> and there's a, on the, you see, you see how it is? On the television, there's uh, someone screaming as their cat is being eaten. Police have warned parents to keep their children indoors. How can we just pardon the woman after her boyfriend's done all this? I mean, really, listen. You listen. I listen to a city that has not known silence since the, since the coming of the automobile. The cars are dead now. The wind strums the high branches. Dumbstruck, Gotham considers its fate. Actually, it'll be very sad to see all of this go. That creature hasn't done a fraction of what it could do, and as yet, it's done nothing irreversible. If he starts forcing the growth of people's intestinal flora, that might be a different story. Try to imagine it, Mr. Strong shoots and writhing tendrils, working their way out of your stomach, creeping up your throat, filling your mouth. Batman, take it easy. Take it easy. While my city is dying because it insists on the letter of the law over love and justice, my city, Jim, dying where it stands. From the chill city granite, cold as corpse flesh, life explodes like battlefield poppies. But the battle is over. The war is won. Gotham just hasn't realized it yet. Let me repeat myself. Either we find some way to release the cable woman, or we begin evacuation right away. There are no other options. That thing out there is very nearly a god. It can crush us. But, but uh, you don't understand. That woman has a re had a relationship with something that isn't human. We can't make exceptions to the law. No exceptions, I see. In that case, I suggest you start rounding up all the other non-human beings who may have had relationships outside of their species. What do you mean? I mean... If all you want to take this all the way, non-humanity doesn't end with the swamp thing. Let me see. 
you'll possibly have to arrest Hawkman. Metamorpho. There's also Starfire from the Titans. Her race evolved from cats, I believe. Martian Manhunter. Obviously Captain Adam. And then, of course, there's what's-his-name. The one who lives in Metropolis. Oh, God, I, I hadn't thought. I didn't realize. I mean, hello? Hello, Carrie? Uh, can you put us through a call to Washington, please? Yes, uh, yeah, it's pretty urgent. Yeah, I mean, he's just, like, displaying the bias of all the people that he mentioned. They're basically all sort of very human forms. And, uh, even though the Martian Manhunter, pretty questionable, and, uh, Swamp Thing is the least human form, but essentially you're just discriminating against him because he looks like a giant swamp. I have changed their world, and their greatest legends could not stand against me. Amidst the fierce joy of victory, something dark flutters across my mind, and it's gone. Something about power. Yeah, he's really not supposed to <laughs> express this degree of power and anger. My doubts vanish, melting into the frosted morning grass. Something has changed. The city is relaxed. The fight gone from it. The battle is over. The war is won. Now I have only to wait. Be outside the court building in an hour. All charges have been dropped on the orders from Washington. They're letting her go. You've won. But if you ever do this to my city again, then I'll kill you. Yes. Yes, I do believe that you might. Batman's expression is one of anger. Swamp Things is one of satisfaction, peace, kind of happiness. Uh, I'm a little surprised that he would even capitulate to thinking that Batman could kill him, but eh, Batman's pretty angry. Maybe you think of something. And in astonishing scenes throughout Gotham, our recently acquired vegetation seems to be putrefying at an incredible rate. It is predicted that within a few hours, most of Gotham will be free of extraneous plant life. Apart from some relatively minor structural damage, the recent troubles are expected to leave few lasting scars. It seems that this was a reversal that was brought on after negotiations at the highest level concerning Abigail Cable case. Miss Cable is to be released from custody in an hour's time. All charges against her have been dropped. It's understood that she'll be handed over to the swamp creature outside Gotham's court building, after which both are expected to leave the city peacefully. Uh, pretty unlikely that will be peaceful. Napalm. And as I said, kind of sad that the vegetation that transformed Gotham just suddenly putrefies and disappears uh, so quickly. But of course, have to get back to DC's continuity, and that continuity does not include a Gotham jungle. Not on your life, friend. Not on your life. There's the uh, balls that click when you release one, uh, which we saw way, way back when these guys first appeared, 21, 20. And the atmosphere here outside, outside the courtroom is electric. In two minutes time, the doors will open and Abigail, Abigail Cable will walk out a free woman. Police are holding back the crowd, but overall things are quiet and the mood is one of intense, of tense anticipation. Will the swamp creature arrive? Does he exist? Despite recent events, many people insist that the swamp man is a creation of the media. Well, from where this reporter is standing, I can only say the war! <laughs> Definitely not. You see his cultish fan base here, including radioactive guy and a hippie. And there he is.
Okay, gentlemen, there he is. Kindly prepare Mr. Luther Scrambler and load it into the launch device. Oh, God. Oh, God, how I've waited for this moment. <laughs> I mean, this is this guy saying this, but of course, I don't know, this is Abigail saying this. Actually, I thought they were juxtaposing the two. Look at him down there. Just look at him. Look at her. Look at how they're staring at each other. They don't know, do they? They don't have the faintest idea. Alec! Oh. And she's running towards him. I hope they don't both get incinerated. And there's this device again with the clicking balls. Okay, check the monitor equipment. If anything with the, his bioelectrical pattern gets out of this area alive, I want to know. Although, frankly, I'm not expecting it to. All right, prepare to fire the scrambler. Better wait till he stops moving. No, no, not yet. Not yet. Almost. Almost there. Okay. As soon as they embrace. And they fire it. Ah! Oh, what? Alec. Oh, God. What's happening? You're shot. Somebody shot you. Oh, God. Abby. Something's wrong with me. Nerves all jumbled up. Can't control. Yes, I... Alec, get out. Get out of the body. And get away. Yes, I... I know. No. What's wrong? I can't. I can't get out. He's reeling. Load the napalm. Abby, get away from me. Something bad's coming. Can feel it. Alec, no. What's wrong with Swampy Man? He's all falling down. Is he going to hurt himself? Oh, Jesus. Swamp guy, they set you up, man. Oh, God. Somebody make this not happen. Fire napalm. No, no, no. My name was Alec Holland. And that's kind of symbolic in a way of also of what the U.S. did in Vietnam. Essentially destroyed the jungle with napalm. So I'm sure there's a little bit of intent from Alan, uh, from Alan Moore with that. I woke up in the lab and there was a bomb taped beneath the table. I reached out to defuse it and I was too late and I burned. Let me go, let me go. Burn to death. Above the pain. Above the crackling and splitting, spitting, I hear the parliament of trees. Power. Power is not the thing. To be calm within oneself, that is the way of the wood. Power tempts anger, and anger is like a wire wildfire. Oh, Abby. Abby, I love you. Monitors show no sign of abnormal bioelectric activity. Within a thousand miles, sir. He didn't get out. Just incinerated by napalm, which is a really unnatural chemical. We got him. And the cult of the Swampies stand horrified. Beautiful image of Batman in silhouette, clutching a completely distraught Abby. And even Commissioner Gar Gordon and Bullock are shocked. And that's the end. Great uh, finale. That was 38 pages. And the next issue, which I'm going to stop here, is number 54 see a little hint of it there Steve Bissett is the cover artist and Rick Beach and Alfredo Kaler are back 
on the art chores after John Toleben did such a beautiful job on that last issue with Batman. But that's the end. Uh, this was uh, segment 11 of the readings. Hope that someone out there has listened to all 10, even though um, we're talking, I don't know, 30 hours worth of hearing my voice and all of my mistakes so i apologize for that but i hope you enjoyed it and if you did uh feel free to come back soon and i'll have the next episode up and thanks very much for listening and feel free to leave a comment as well that's it goodbye see you next time